Hey everyone, I'm Haskaha. It's been a while since I created my original Star Citizen camera tutorial when it debuted in Alpha 2.6. Most of the camera system remains the same, but some things have changed and I felt it was time to update my tutorial. So, whether you're an in-game screenshotter, videographer, content creator, or just want a better understanding of how it all works, buckle up and get ready for my exhaustive breakdown of Star Citizen's in-game camera system. I'm only covering the in-game camera controls in this video, and I won't be going into any of my specific techniques, tricks, or tips, but I might mention and link to a few along the way. I will be going into great detail on all the camera options and controls, and referencing real-world photography terms and techniques, as this is meant to be a definitive guide on the entire camera system. Please keep in mind that all of the key bindings I discuss here are based on the default Star Citizen bindings for a standard US or American QWERTY keyboard layout, and while it should be possible to bind some of the camera controls to a gamepad controller, I've never had much luck with it beyond using the thumbsticks for free look. Also, the only camera-related control bound to a gamepad by default is the cycle camera view control, so I won't be covering or mentioning gamepad controls in this video. My tutorial is based on the current version of Star Citizen, Alpha 3.10 as of July 2020. If you're watching this at a later date or patch, please keep in mind things may have changed. If the changes are significant enough, I'll make an updated or additional video, so check my channel for newer versions. Please check the video description for timestamp links to specific topics within this video if you want to jump ahead or revisit certain sections. Some might find it useful to download and print my Star Citizen Advanced Camera Controls one-page reference guide, and have that to glance at as you follow along with this tutorial. The link to my reference guide is in the description below. Okay, the first thing I want to clarify is the name of the camera system within Star Citizen. When it debuted in Alpha 2.6, CIG was calling it Director Mode. A patch or two later, all in-game references to it were changed to Advanced Camera Controls, once the redundant Chase Camera was dropped out of the system. Technically, Director Mode was a specific set of controls within the Advanced Camera Controls while in Orbit Camera. You'll still hear people, both in the community and CIG, refer to it as Director Mode from time to time. I will not, for simplicity's sake. And in other games, such things are usually called photo mode or simply camera controls. For me and this video, I will be calling it as it's labeled in Star Citizen Keybinding Menus, Advanced Camera Controls, which are a suite of controls within the broader camera system. Moving on. To help explain the camera system, I break it down into states and modes. There are three main states of playing the game with varying camera modes under them. The first state is character which is when you're walking around on foot or an EVA, basically whenever you're not controlling a vehicle, turret, etc. The second state is vehicle, which is when you're piloting a ship, rover, controlling a turret, riding as a passenger, and so on. And the third state is spectator, which is currently only active in private Star Marine and Arena Commander game modes, which are quicker, competitive, arena-style matches. Within each of those three states, you have a few camera modes, which are first person, orbit, VoIP selfie, and in some situations, an additional orbit camera, which I'll cover later. Even though the various states share similar camera modes and the different modes share similar features and functions, it's not all universal. What works in character state orbit mode does not necessarily work for vehicle state orbit mode and vice versa. So back to the three states, character, vehicle, and spectator. Let's start with the character state and work through its camera modes. Most of this applies to the vehicle state as well. The character state has four different cameras available, but two of them are identical in features and functions, they just start at different default positions, so I consider those two the same mode. The character state camera modes are, number one, first person, number two, orbit camera, also known as third person view, this is where the advanced camera controls live, and number three is the FOIP selfie, which is nothing more than a camera turned back on your character's face emulating a selfie stick. So let's step through character state cameras and then break down the tools within the advanced camera controls under orbit mode. By default, the third person view toggle is the F4 key. F4 is also the advanced camera controls modifier, but we'll talk more about it as a modifier later. The default starting camera mode is first person view in which you're looking through the eyes of your character. This has no real camera control to it. Pressing F4 once will take you to orbit mode, more specifically the first character orbit mode camera called over the shoulder which is the third-person view that allows you to see your character as if you're controlling a floating drone camera. Pressing F4 again from here will take you to the second character orbit mode camera behind the back. And pressing F4 one more time from here will take you back to the beginning with first-person mode. From the default first-person view, press F4 once to get into the over-the-shoulder orbit camera. 
By default, the camera is positioned behind and to the right of your character's head, which is why it's known as over the shoulder. I'll be working you through all the fancy controls from this camera mode. Again, technically, the character state has two orbit cameras. One is over the shoulder, similar to games like Witcher 3, the Batman Arkham series, the Middle Earth Shadow of series, Mad Max, and so on. And the second has the camera positioned straight behind the back of your character. Both of those orbit cameras have the advanced camera controls and have the exact same features, functions, ranges, and limitations. You can move the camera, adjust depth of field, and so on. They are almost identical, other than having different default starting camera positions. And that's why I say the character state has three camera modes spread across four different cameras. But know that you could also do the same from the second character orbit camera mode behind the back. All the features, quirks, etc. that I cover here in this orbit camera hold true for the behind the back orbit camera as well, because again, they are almost identical. Within orbit mode, you can apply vertical, up, down, lateral, left, right, and longitudinal back forward offsets to the camera to reposition it. You can change focal lengths, which CIG is calling FOV or field of view. You can also change the depth of field or DOF to increase or decrease a blur effect on objects beyond the focal point. You can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, which is actually different than the longitudinal offset and focal length zoom. And you can rotate the orbit camera around its central point for varying angles and views. This is also known as free look. Let's take a closer look at how to use each of those controls. So remember, to use advanced camera controls in the character state, you must be in the orbit camera, either the over-the-shoulder camera or the behind-the-back camera. Now, to use any of the advanced camera controls, with the exception of free look, you must hold the F4 key as a modifier while pressing the actual key assigned to the control. The offset controls are up and down arrows for moving the camera forward and backward longitudinally, left and right arrows for moving the camera left and right laterally, and page up and page down for moving the camera up and down vertically. The offset control is going to be held down for smooth movements or tapped for fine adjustments, but we currently have no way of adjusting the speed or increment value of the offsets. The offset controls are relative to the camera view, not your character. That means if you tilt the camera view forward or down looking at the ground while your character is still looking at the horizon, F4 and page up will move the camera forward along the ground and not up away from it. Also, the camera offsets are constrained to an invisible box that is centered to the origin point of the camera. The walls of the offset boundaries box extend roughly 10 meters in both directions on all three axes, lateral, longitudinal, and vertical, meaning we have about a 20 by 20 by 20 meters cube to work in. For example, you can move the camera 10 meters backwards from your character, then 10 meters up, and then 10 meters to the left. This is a more recent change to the advanced camera controls. In the past, the character orbit offset limits were only about 2 meters from the origin point, and the limits were more of a sphere than a square. Now we can push the camera into the corners of the invisible cube rather than the camera rolling back in as it rounds the sphere. Also, you can hold multiple offset direction keys down simultaneously for combined directional movement, like holding F4 and right arrow and down arrow to go diagonally backwards. And again, reset the camera back to default by pressing F4 and the numpad asterisk keys together. Anyway, remember earlier how I mentioned the two character state orbit cameras, over the shoulder and behind the back, and how they have different starting camera positions? Well, these starting camera positions aren't just repositioned offsets. They are completely different camera origin points, which means that because the behind the back camera starts further behind your character than the over the shoulder camera, the offset boundaries box has also been moved back to the center of that origin point. And that means you can actually get the camera slightly further away from your character in the behind the back camera than you can with the over the shoulder camera. As you can see, with the field of view set identically for each camera and using texture on the ground as markers, the behind the back camera can get further from the character on the negative longitudinal axis than the over the shoulder camera. And the inverse is true. The over-the-shoulder camera can be pushed further in front of your character on the longitudinal axis than the behind-the-back camera. Another important concept with the use of these offset controls is to understand that the offset controls set the focal point of the camera, which impacts some of the other advanced camera controls. I'll point those out as I cover them. Now on to the FOV or field of view control, which basically allows you to step through about 15 lenses with varying focal lengths that change the field of view from wide angle to narrow zoom. I say steps because it is not a smooth transition, as you can see. 
Again, to use an advanced camera control, you must hold the F4 key while pressing the bound action key. To select wider and wider angle lenses, press F4 and numpad plus. To select a narrower or more zoomed in lenses, press F4 and numpad minus. These controls cannot be held down for smooth continuous transitions. You must tap them repeatedly. Keep in mind, increasing the focal length using F4 and numpad minus narrows the view, magnifies the image, and flattens out objects, while decreasing the focal length using F4 and numpad plus widens the viewing angle and exaggerates objects that are closest to you, almost like a fisheye lens or a hotel door view hole. Next up is depth of field, or DOF, which is a little harder to understand and even harder to control in game. An overly simplified translation of depth of field is a blurring of objects in front of and behind the focal point or what's in sharp focus. This is not to be confused with something called bokeh, which refers to the effect produced by the out-of-focus areas beyond the depth of field, or more specifically, the really blurry parts. Technically, depth of field is the distance or zone of acceptable sharpness within a photo that will appear in focus. A higher depth of field means more of the image will appear in sharp focus, and a lower depth of field means a much smaller range of the image will be in focus. Also, the lower the depth of field, the higher the blur effect for objects furthest from the focal point, in both directions. So first, here's how to do it in-game. Remember, we're still in the character state orbit cam because we're using advanced camera controls. While holding F4, press home to decrease the depth of field, which will reduce the range of sharp focus, blurring objects in front of and behind the focal point. While still holding F4, keep tapping home to continue decreasing the depth of field and increasing the blurriness. To increase the depth of field, which again is increasing the range of sharp focus and decreasing the amount of blur, Hold F4 and tap the end key. Like field of view, you have to step through these changes by tapping the keys. You cannot smoothly and continuously transition through the changes by holding the keys down. Also, the default starting depth of field value is an infinite depth of field, meaning everything is in focus. So maybe you're asking yourself, how do I work with depth of field? The three factors that affect depth of field in real world cameras are aperture or f-stop, distance from the subject to the camera, and the focal length of the lens. We have no control over aperture in game, so forget that one. We can control the distance from the subject by either moving our character or using the offset controls to move the camera. And we can control the focal length by changing lenses, also known as the field of view. What makes depth of field difficult to control in game is that we have no way of arbitrarily setting the focal point. For example, in a real camera you can pick a point to focus on by focusing the lens, either manually or automatically whether it's 3 feet from the camera or 30 feet. In-game, the focal point is set within the invisible 20 by 20 by 20 meters offset boundaries box. We can, however, move the focal point around within the box with the offset controls, but we can never set the focal point outside of the box. That means we can't focus on a distant object in the background while blurring the foreground. Changing focal lengths, also known as the field of view, will also have an effect on the amount of blur on objects outside the depth of field. Using a longer, zoomed focal length will increase the blurriness of objects outside the depth of field. As a quick example of putting the depth of field together with the other controls, get into orbit mode and reset the camera to its defaults by pressing F4 and the numpad asterisk together. To make the blur effect more noticeable, I'm going to increase the focal length or decrease the field of view by tapping F4 and numpad minus a few times. Now hold F4 and tap the home key about 11 times until you hit the maximum depth of field blur meaning you now have the smallest depth of field range. Depending on what is directly in front of your character, almost everything will be out of focus. Now we'll use the longitudinal offsets to move and find the focal point. While holding F4, tap the down arrow to move the camera offset backwards. As I do so, you'll notice my character becomes less blurry. That's because by default, the focal point starts just in front of your character, and by using the backward offsets, I'm not only moving the camera, but the focal point backwards as well. And the focal point is now passing over my character, causing it to be within the focus depth of field. Because we don't have control over the speed at which the offsets change, getting the focal point to rest on a specific object can be difficult. But if you tap the up and down arrows while holding F4, eventually you can get it. In my example, the focal point is now on my character's back. Now you can start to increase the depth of field by tapping F4 and the end key together, which again will expand the depth of field, reducing the amount of blur. For a more detailed example, check out my Using Depth of Field in Star Citizen video linked in the top right of this video and also in the description below. Next up is what in the key bindings is referred to as zoom and is bound to the mouse wheel by default, so we've always called it mouse zoom. Using it is simple enough, so long as you have a mouse with a scroll wheel. 
While holding the camera modifier F4, scrolling up or away from you pushes the camera forward while scrolling down or towards you pulls the camera backwards. The range on the mouse zoom is probably about 30 meters, but only backwards from the camera's current position in relation to the camera's view. Think of the mouse zoom like it's on a 30 meter string that starts at the focal point set by the offsets. The default starting position of the zoom is about 1 meter on that string. You can move the camera forward about 1 meter before hitting its forward limit, but you have 30 meters behind you to work with. And since the start of the mouse zoom range is on the focal point, you can add the backward offset to the mouse zoom. For example, if you mouse zoom backwards out to its maximum, you can then use the offset controls, F4 and down arrow, to pull the camera an additional 10 meters backwards. But it's not a zoom in the traditional photography sense of the word. Zoom implies a changing of the focal length, which changes the field of view while narrowing the view angle and magnifying the image. Mouse zoom does not. It acts more like an offset control that moves the camera longitudinally, forward and backward but is not bound by the offset boundary box. Mouse zoom also does not change the focal point. It is actually anchored to the focal point as set by the offset controls. Something like this does not exist in real world photography, at least not by itself. For those photography minded folks, this mouse zoom is the equivalent of physically walking forward or backward with your camera while simultaneously adjusting the focus to maintain a set focal point. It's just weird. But it does allow us to position the camera longitudinally well outside the offset box, specifically backwards or negatively. And when used correctly in conjunction with the offset controls to set the focal point and depth of field to control the blur, it can create some very interesting images. However, keep in mind that just like in real photography, the distance from the camera to the focal point affects the depth of field. The closer the camera is to the focal point as set by the offset controls, the shallower or shorter the depth of field will be. And the further the camera is from the focal point, the deeper or longer the depth of field will be. That means that if you use a low depth of field which results in a high amount of blur, moving the camera backwards with the mouse zoom will cause the depth of field to deepen or enlarge, which will reduce the blur effect of the depth of field. And next in the orbit mode controls, we have free look. When on, free look allows you to swing the orbit camera 360 degrees around its current focal point using the mouse, gamepad, or whatever you have bound to the look axes. Free look is still the only function in the advanced camera controls that does not require you to hold the F4 modifier as well. You simply need to be in an orbit camera mode and hold the Z or Z key. One major change to the advanced camera controls that came in Alpha 3.6 is that Freelook is no longer an on-off toggle. Instead, you have to hold Z or Z in order to continue using Freelook and release Z when you want to turn it off. The reason for this change, I believe, has to do with the addition of a Freelook in first-person mode in 3.6. Basically, holding Z or Z in first-person allows you to move your character's head without affecting the direction your character is walking. For a more detailed explanation, check out my video covering the change of free look from a toggle to a modifier. In that video, I also explain in more detail how to make free look on by default so that you don't have to hold the Z key by taking advantage of a bug that still exists in the current Alpha 3.9 version. The link is in the upper right corner of this video and also in the description below. Free look is not affected by the offset boundary box and is only limited by collisions with other objects like the floor, walls, other players, and so on. And for whatever reason, free look cannot rotate the camera directly above your character. Its limit is about 80 degrees from the horizon. While free look is active, you will not be able to orient your character with the mouse, gamepad, etc. It's important to understand that the free look pivot point is not your character, but rather your focal point as set by the offset controls. Moving the camera to the right of your character with the lateral offset, F4 and right arrow, and then engaging free look by holding Z you'll notice the camera view pivots around this point to the right of your character. However, since mouse zoom does not change the focal point, free look will pivot on the focal point while being extended out with the mouse zoom, again like it's attached to a string tied to the focal point. We also have the ability to save and recall up to 9 orbit mode camera views, and that includes the field of view, depth of field, offset, mouse zoom, free look angle, and which orbit camera you are in. Once you have a camera view that you'd like to save, press and hold the F4 key while then holding any of the 1 through 9 numpad keys for about 3 seconds. Holding the key combination for a few seconds is important because recalling a saved view is accomplished by tapping the F4 key and the numpad key you saved the view to. 
These saved views are persistent across game sessions because they are stored locally on the player's machine. And not only does it save your character orbit mode positions, but it also saves every vehicle seat as separate entries. That means you could have nine saved camera positions for the pilot seat of the Cutlass Black, and then nine completely independent saved positions for the M50, and nine more completely independent saved camera positions for your character state. You can also transition between various saved camera positions. But regardless of the difference between two camera positions, the transition always takes one second. Which, when used creatively in a video project, can be jarring. You can also delete all saved views from your current orbit camera by pressing and holding F4 and numpad 0 for 3 seconds. For example, if you press and hold F4 and numpad 0 while in character orbit mode, it will clear any saved views you have for character orbit mode, but leave any saved views you have for all the other vehicle orbit cameras. Now that you've possibly totally screwed up your orbit camera, you can reset it back to its default position, field of view, depth of field, and zoom by pressing F4 and the numpad asterisk key. And that about covers the entirety of the orbit camera mode controls within the character state. Before we move on, I wanted to mention a few character orbit mode quirks. The camera is not supposed to pass through solid objects. In video game terms, the camera obeys collisions. The point of mentioning this is that some objects have bigger collision bubbles than others. And if you weren't expecting it, the collision reaction can cause some rather odd camera behaviors. It can also make it rather difficult getting the camera close to some objects. NPCs or non-player characters have a rather large collision bubble around them as far as the orbit camera is concerned. So, just be aware of the camera collisions and how they make the camera snap and bounce around. I've mentioned that it helps to think of the camera like it's attached to a string, or perhaps more accurately a stick extending from the focal point. This way of thinking also helps explain the way the camera reacts to collisions. For example, you cannot push the camera around a corner from your character using the offset controls. Instead of the invisible stick bending, it shortens to maintain its connection. The odd part here though is that you can move the camera around the corner if you first push the camera past the edge of the wall with the offset, and then move the camera backwards with the mouse zoom. Another oddity is that when you first enter character orbit mode or reset the view, the camera will be locked to your character's head movements, with the exception of head tracking movements. For example, moving the mouse moves your character's head and the orbit camera moves with your character's head like the camera is attached to a rigid stick protruding from the back of your character's head. However, if you have FOIP or face over IP enabled and move your head with head tracking, the camera will not move with your character's head. That camera to head locked behavior changes as soon as you tap the Z button, which is the free look button. Notice now, even though I'm not holding the Z button down, the camera is no longer moving with my character's head while using the mouse. You can look left, right, up, down without affecting the camera angle. Until you turn your character's head far enough to one side, your character will pivot in that direction and the orbit camera will then follow. This is just one of those odd little things to be aware of, though it won't affect you the majority of the time. The only way to get the camera locked back to your head movement is to reset the orbit camera view by pressing F4 and the numpad asterisk keys together. One last thing worth mentioning is that the character state orbit mode camera has a very subtle sway to it. In older versions of the game, the sway was much more obvious, but has been toned down over subsequent patches. But it does still sway ever so slightly. I mention it because it can affect both screenshots and videos. For example, it makes time-lapse videos in which you speed up the playback a bit more annoying to create. As you can see, it's most obvious on objects closest to the camera. If you want to steady this way, try holding left shift, which is the key that, by default, causes your character to hold their breath to steady a sniper shot. With all the new survival mechanics being put into Star Citizen, I wouldn't expect us to be able to hold our breath endlessly like this without consequences. Don't be surprised if during some future patch, your character passes out while attempting to do this. The final character state camera mode is the FOIP selfie, or face over IP selfie. This mode to me is mostly a gimmick and serves no real purpose. It has nothing more than a fixed camera with zero controls looking at your character's face, just like a camera on a selfie stick would. You can access FOIP selfie from any mode within both character and vehicle states by pressing and holding one key, the numpad minus key. And that's it. You can't move the camera, you can't change the field of view, you can't use free look. Moving your character's head with the mouse or gamepad like you normally would causes the selfie camera to follow your face. If you have FOIP or phase over IP set up and on, you'll see your character mimicking any faces you are making while looking into your webcam. Anyway, you can create a look similar to selfie camera with the character state orbit mode, and have more control over the camera in orbit mode with offsets, DOF, FOV, and so on. I never use the FOIP selfie mode and really don't understand why it's here, but maybe that's just me. And that's all for the character state camera modes, now on to the vehicle state. 
Since the vehicle state camera modes have a lot in common with the character state camera modes that I just covered, I won't go over them in exhaustive detail. So again, vehicle state applies to any time you are piloting or driving a vehicle or sitting at most of the secondary stations within a vehicle. The vehicle state has three, and sometimes four, camera modes, which are very similar to the character state camera modes. They are first person, in which you're looking through the eyes of your character while behind the controls of a vehicle and aided by any additional HUD or MFDs. And that's heads up displays and multifunctional displays. Vehicle Orbit Camera is an external third-person camera centered on the vehicle that is similar to the character state version of the Orbit Camera. Vehicle State also has a FOIP selfie mode. And then Missile Camera, which is an external third-person camera that is activated when a missile is launched from a vehicle. Unfortunately, the Missile Camera hasn't been working for quite a few patches now, but I'll cover it here anyway just in case it comes back. Let's start with the Vehicle Orbit Mode. From your default starting camera mode of first-person view in which you're looking through the eyes of your character, Pressing F4 once will take you to Vehicle Orbit Mode, which starts behind your vehicle much like the Behind the Back Character State Orbit Mode. And again, Vehicle Orbit Mode functions the same as Character Orbit Mode. You have all the same advanced camera functions. All three offsets, Lateral, Longitudinal, and Vertical. And you have Field of View or Focal Length Controls, Depth of Field Controls, mouse zoom, free look, save and load views, and reset to default view. The ranges for the offsets and mouse zoom can differ depending on the vehicle you are in. Larger vehicles tend to have higher offset limits and so on. Some vehicle or seat stations will have a secondary orbit camera you can cycle to by pressing F4 again. Most of these secondary orbit cameras seem like a bug and shouldn't actually be there. I just thought it was worth mentioning. And like the character state orbit mode, the vehicle state orbit mode also has a sway to the camera, though it is much more pronounced in this vehicle state. Luckily, we can actually turn the vehicle orbit mode sway down or completely off. Go to the options menu, then under the game settings tab, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and use the global camera shake slider to set your desired camera sway amount. Zero is no camera sway. This will not remove camera movement from vehicle accelerations and pitch, roll, and yaw motions, but if the vehicle is stationary or flying at a constant vector or speed, you will get no camera sway. Unfortunately, this global camera shake slider does not affect the subtle character orbit mode sway. Another interesting ability of the vehicle state orbit mode is that your own vehicle does not cause camera collisions, meaning you can use the vehicle orbit offset controls to push the camera through the hull and walls of your own vehicle and move the camera around the interior. If you were to get out of the vehicle seat and try that in the character orbit mode, you'll see that the camera now has proper collisions with the hull and walls of your vehicle. Moving along, vehicle state also has a FOIP selfie mode just like the character state. It is accessed in the exact same way, by holding the numpad minus key without any other modifiers. And just like character FOIP, vehicle FOIP has no other controls, so that's about it. And on to vehicle state missile camera, which is actually part of something called cinematic cameras in the options menu. But like I stated earlier, it has not been working for a few patches now. I had to dig through my old footage to find video of it in action. I mention it only because the cinematic cameras option is still available in the settings menu even though the cameras it controls don't work anymore. And it has nothing to do with the advanced camera controls, which understandably confuses people. According to the official Arena Commander Pilot's Guide, the cinematic cameras were a missile chase camera and a countermeasures camera, and in order to have them available, the cinematic camera's setting in the options menu under the game settings tab had to be set to yes. Then in game you'd fire a missile as you normally would, but keep holding the missile launch button to switch to the missile camera. The missile camera would turn off as soon as you let go of the missile launch button or the missile was destroyed. While in missile camera, there were no additional camera controls, it simply tracked the missile on its own. But again, it's not possible to trigger the missile camera right now in the current patch, and it's unclear if it will ever come back. But now you know what the cinematic camera setting is for in the options menu. And that wraps up all the character and vehicle state camera modes, now onto spectator state, which unfortunately, as far as I can tell, is not accessible at all in the current version of Star Citizen, even though it's still present in the key bindings menu. And with the upcoming debut of the new Theaters of War game mode, it's unclear whether or not Spectator will return or be revamped. In fact, over time, the Spectator camera has become more and more limited anyway. 
Basically, the spectator state was only available in private matches within the Arena Commander and Star Marine game modes, and allowed you to act as a viewer rather than a player. The most recent version allowed you to switch between active players and had limited advanced camera controls. But since I'm unable to create a private match, I can't test or verify Spectator State's current features. So I'll have to leave it at that. And that wraps up all the camera states and modes. While this camera system as a whole is a fantastic tool and a great step forward for people who like in-game camera options, there are a few things I hope get addressed moving forward. One control that is still missing that other games usually have is the ability to roll the camera onto its side. Also, like I mentioned earlier, we can't set a focal point independent of the offset position, which really limits how we use the depth of field feature. All that being said, I don't consider any of these things a high priority in the grand scheme of the game. Obviously, Star Citizen is not a camera simulator game. I see all of this camera stuff as a bonus, and I'll take whatever I can get. One other thing worth mentioning in relation to the camera system is Star Citizen's built-in screenshot function, because it's a major reason for people wanting to learn the advanced camera controls. While it currently has no direct connection to the camera controls, it hopefully will someday. To take a screenshot in any state and any mode, press the print screen button on your keyboard. Unfortunately, there is currently no way to change any settings related to the screenshot function, like file format, compression and quality levels, or even the location the images are saved to. The file you'll end up with after pressing print screen is a lossy or compressed JPEG, captured at the game's current resolution and saved to your Star Citizen installation directory usually located at Program Files, Robert Space Industries, Star Citizen, Live, and then Screenshots. If you participate in PTU or Public Test Universe builds, you'll also have a directory next to Live called PTU, which will have its own screenshots directory. Personally, I don't use Star Citizen's screenshot function, because I prefer to capture in a lossless or no visible compression PNG format. To learn more about image formats and screenshot quality, watch my video In-Game Screenshot Quality. The link is in the upper right corner of this video and also in the description below. And that's it. I'd like to thank my fellow crackpot camera junkies and friends for helping me out. People like Relum, Wee Hamster, Captain Raoul, Narayan, and a whole bunch of others have been sharing anything and everything we learn about the Star Citizen camera system with each other for years now. This tutorial was my effort at combining our collective knowledge into a more comprehensive and accessible format. Also, I don't pretend to be an expert on any of this. If I've made any mistakes, haven't explained things clearly enough, or if you have questions, let me know in the comments below. I need to thank my Patreons, both past and present, who have been supporting me over the years. All of their funds go to my sporadic Star Citizen giveaways for the public, or are invested into hardware and software to keep my PC capable of creating my content within Star Citizen. Check the description below for my Patreon link if you're interested in learning more. And please like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.